I guess it's no longer news at this point that the Niger Republic, the Niger, which is very close to Nigeria, at least um, we share a border with Niger Republic, the country has been seized by a military government. The country is now being ruled. A coup d'etat happened in Niger Republic, which resulted in the seizure, or should I say, in the kidnap <laughs> of the president. The president is now in the custody of the military in the states. And since the news of a coup d'etat that happened in Niger broke out, the, most of the politicians have been in hiding. Those that couldn't you know, get into hiding quick enough have been embarrassed on the streets, beaten, stoned, you know, the likes, because Niger have been through it. Have been through, and I also I also think that and another thing that you know uh, made this coup data happened, I think was a subsidy removal. You guys know that the subsidy removal also has also you know affected them to some extent, and we all know that Nigeria is the one supplying the electricity and the likes. This particular country is being colonized by France, and we all know that all the countries that France colonized, France has refused to, you know, remove their hold. They refused to let go of the iron hold that they have on their colonies, all the countries that they colonized. Niger Republic is not an exception. And I feel that the people in Niger feel that they have not really benefited from good governance, <laughs> likewise every other African country. But in short, what I'm trying to say is I feel Nigeria should learn from what is happening currently in Niger Republic. We really need to learn from this because if things continue like this in the country, we might say military can never take over in Nigeria, but <laughs> never say never. Never say never. A revolution happened in Ghana. Let's not forget where the the, the all all the politicians that have been embezzling money got executed. Now in Niger Republic, let's go back to Niger Republic. The Minister of Finance is now being asked to give account of everything they've spent, of how they've spent the money to the last cobo in the next forty eight hours. He has been given an ultimatum, and since then he's been crying out, saying that people should help him. In my mind, I'm like, like, what? Is that not, <laughs> is that not part of your job? Is that not what you should be doing, like day to day, accounting for every couple you spent? Is that not part of like the things that you should be doing on the norms, even if there's no military government in charge? But it's looking as if <laughs> this man knows that if he should give account. <laughs> I will law, a lot of money have been spent recklessly, extravagantly, and he knows that there's no way he can escape it. He's surely going to be executed like the military government has threatened. Before we go into the details of today's news, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do well to subscribe, turn on the post notification bell so that you can be the first person to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Help us grow this channel by giving this video a massive thumbs up so that it gets recommended to other YouTube viewers all around the world as well. Lastly, leave your opinions in the comment section below. Without further ado, let's delve right into the details of today's news. Niger Finance Minister cries after cool plotters gives him 48 hours to account for public funds or be executed. A minister of finance in Niger Republic cried after being given 48 hours by the coup leaders to account for all the monies stolen from the people or face death by firing squad. 
According to information, the name of the Minister of Finance in Niger hasn't been ascertained. President Bazoum was the first elected leader to succeed in Niger since independence in 1960. Now its captors have suspended the country's constitution and installed General Abdurrahman Chiani as head of state. Niger is a key part of the African region known as the Sahel, a belt of land that stretches from the Atlantic Ocean to the Red Sea. The area is plagued by jihadists and beset by military regimes. You all let me have your thoughts in the comment section. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I feel that Nigeria needs, we need to learn a lot. We need to learn a lot from what is happening currently, especially our politicians, because if things continue like this, I will not be surprised that the fate of our, polit of our politicians will become the fate of, you know, the, the politicians in the Nigeria Republic currently. I saw a video of where a woman was being stoned and dragged on the floor. She was finally rescued by, by some other people. But you know, it's it, it's it, this is when people are not getting what they're supposed to get from their politicians. They are not getting the, the, the they are not they are not they are not getting like the good things of governance. You know, someone once said that in Nigeria we pray for practically everything, everything that should be provided by our government. That is what you know people are using as prayer points in church. But outside the country, you don't have to even pray much because the necessary things, the amenities that you need are provided for, for you by the government. So people do not even really need to pray that hard or fast that hard. And looking at it deeply, most of these African countries, we have the natural resources, we have the wealth. But the problem is that we mismanage this wealth. And on the other hand, we have the UK, the likes of the UK, the likes of the US, who do not have any natural resources, but depend on taxation. But when they tax their citizen, they make sure that they, they, their citizen benefits. You know, when you over there, when you pay tax, you are sure that your children is going, are going to go to school for free. They are not paying a, a dime. They are not paying a penny for a school fees unless you want to send them to private schools. Even the government schools, they are good enough. For your children to go to so that that is a country but here we just keep struggling african leaders and now tinobo is you know calling on african leaders you know is now the chairman of ECOWAS. is calling on african you know he's hosting them very soon because of this school that happened in niger so they are trying to look for ways to make these military uh, uh, people, officers who are taking over energy to hands down and they are trying to make them, you know, see reasons why they need to go back to democratically elected uh, government. You can imagine. Before I go, let's take a look at one or two reactions from people online. Uluwa Yomi Oni says, similar saga signaling if urgent measure is not employed in Nigeria, just what I said, like Nigeria should take a leaf from their book. Because if things do not repair itself, if things go on like this, probably we'll be talking about, if not cool, if the military refuses to take over, Nigerians themselves, you know, there's a limit to which you can push somebody. If you push them to the wall and they have nowhere else to go, like, they will have to turn back and attack you. That is it. And I just hope that it doesn't get to the extent where our politicians now, you know, start running helter-skelter, looking for where to run to. Lastly, Godwin says, If he be wealthy, let him account for that and be executed. Even in heaven, there is an accounting system of life transaction. A BO, account for the money now. So maybe you were the minister of finance. You were in charge. So account for everything you've spent. Is it that hard? <laughs> I don't think it should, but you guys, let me have your thoughts in the comment section, guys. Subscribe if you haven't. I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.